Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be doing another custom league draft, and this time, instead of using six teams, we're going to use seven. We're going to add one, and it's going to be all Canadian teams. I'm not going to modify anything else, all the salary caps, etc. will stay the same. I am going to make it 84 games, though, just for fun. Actually, you know what? Let's change things up. Let's make it 70. I have no idea why, just a random number. 72. That's a great number. I've changed my mind. That's what we're doing. The number of teams that qualify for playoffs, I can only do four. So that's unfortunate. I am going to do a wild card round though, which allows us to make it six. Okay, so only one team doesn't make it. Imagine being that team. It's going to be me. Just for fun, I'm going to make it a shootout. <laughs> and imagine winning the Stanley Cup off a shootout. I'm down. I don't care. I think it'd be funny. All right, we've got the seven Canadian teams set up here. The AHL teams didn't exactly follow suit, but... Don't really care. Doesn't matter. It is once again that time. Time for the good old-fashioned randomize. Which of the seven teams will we land on? We're gonna find out now. It is the Vancouver Canucks. Owner mode, no thank you. Jabroni, stop trying to edit my lines. It's getting tiring. Obviously, we want Fantasy Draft to be on. CPUs can trade if they ever so desire. Let's say we get draft pick number seven. We're just gonna get the last pick. I have a feeling. Called it. My voice is still not back to 100%, but it is a lot better than it used to be. So that is a positive. Calgary Flames with the first overall pick. So McDusty going to the other Alberta team, I can only imagine. Yep. And Matthews winds up back on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay. Vancouver with the seventh pick. Who should we take? I feel like drafting a goalie first was a mistake last time. But I get back-to-back -back picks. So I'm going to take Thatcher to be our first pick. And then I'm gonna select, thinking probably ADB. 89 overall, he's got the X factor. He is a sniper, so hopefully he could bury some goals for us. Not the best shot power, but the accuracy is certainly there. 95 discipline, let's go Alex. To play with Alex, we will be taking Nick Suzuki at 86 overall, 7.8, little steep, not gonna lie, but that's all right, we'll bite the bullet on this one. And also, I'm going to sort by potential. I have no idea when he's going to go, but I'm going to take your Uri Slavkovsky, 78 overall. We are going to suck, I bet. No, you know what? Screw that. We're going to be sick. And I'm going to take Noah Hannafin as our next selection. We do need a defenseman, and I'm going to take a defensive partner for him. I think Pionk shoots right. Okay, so Pionk will be our second defender. And then we have our top defensive pair. Toffoli would be very decent for the second line. And that's exactly where he's going to play. I'm having a big internal debate between Kane and Hyman right now. Kane is one overall better, making a little bit less as well. He's a power forward versus a two-way forward. He does have 75 discipline, which actually is not that bad. He's got the medium top six. Hyman's got medium top nine. All right, let's go with Kane. Kind of a random pick. But I'm going to go with Shane Pinto. At 950k, you can't go wrong. Michael Bunting will be joining our squadron. I should probably start thinking about some more defense in the very near future, as well as a backup goalie. Okay, yeah, we are falling off quick here. Should I just go with someone like Montembo? Or I could take Primo. That didn't work out so well last time. 2.8 seems pretty low for an 83 overall, so I'm just going to go with Jake Allen as our backup. Ooh, Shillington. 2.5. 82 overall. That's a very, very solid pick. I'm surprised he hasn't gone yet, actually. So he will be going right about now. We still have $34 million of cap, so we don't really need to be too conscious of that at the moment. And on that note, I think I'm going to take Tyler Myers, number 57, making 6 mil, 82 overall. He is a 6 foot 8 monster. Yeah, that's our next pick. It's another centerman, but I feel like he could probably play wing. Yeah, he's center slash left wing. He's a sniper, which maybe not ideal for the third line, but also get some depth goal scoring perhaps. Robertson, you're joining the squad. Again, I'm just trying to take a mix of younger and older players. Warren Fogle, 80 overall, 2.7, and he's 26. Yeah, I played against this guy once upon a time. Let's go ahead and draft him. We're going to go with the man, the myth, the cup destroyer, Nicholas Obey Kubel. I got to let that go eventually. It's just so funny. Come on. Nate Mack's face after that as well was iconic. Is this guy like a free agent or something? It says he plays for Chicago. I don't know why he's available in this draft. Oh, I know why. It's because the AHL team, Chicago, part of the original six. So they stuffed them in there. And then as a result, we get Rockford. And as a result, we get Ian. So I can't take you. I can, however, take Nicholas. Another Nicholas. Yeah, 77 overall. He's 25. 950k. He's also a right-handed defenseman. So that works out decently. 
Sure. We only need three more draft picks and we have $23 million of cap space. So I am going to go on a little bit of a spending spree here. Nate Schmidt. Sure, why not? Capitals legend, making almost 6 million, who cares? Milan Lucic, 79 overall, making 5.2. Yup, I am going to make that third line, fourth line, fourth line. Sorry Lucic, didn't mean to get your hopes up. That fourth line is gonna be pretty difficult to play against because I already know who my next selection is and we have back-to-back -back picks here. At 78 overall, we are gonna be taking the Wayne Train, baby. Not really a big spend on this player specifically, only 900k, but I don't care. I'm drafting him regardless. And on that note, that's our team. So I'm going to sim the entire draft. Let's go put these lines together, shall we? This is a little summary. We've got Thatcher Demko, ADB, Suzuki, Slaff as our first four picks. Noah Hannafin and Pionk, top defensive pair. I think we have potential to be good but I also think we have potential to suck. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea which way this is going to go. It's one of those drafts where I could see it tilting either way, but usually it tilts to the negative way. We suck, but hopefully this is not the case. Why does the game insist on putting Uri as a centerman? I know someone pointed that out as well on the career sim for him, but I just did best lines and they are very adamant about him being a centerman on the second line. What is up with that? Side note, did not draft David Camp. And I know who's out. Robertson, you are joining the roster. There you go. To be fair, I guess he does have 74 face-offs, so can't really go wrong. I think I'm going to play Robertson on the second line. It just works because this line then gets a plus one. Actually, I've changed my mind because he is a sniper, and I don't really want two snipers playing together per se. I mean, it could work, but I'm not going to risk it for the biscuit. Shane Pinto will be playing with Lucic and Wayne Simmons. What a phenomenal fourth line. We also have roll four lines ice time allocation. So that is a thing of beauty. Let's check our defense. A little worried here. Okay, I'll take zeros. That's fine. That is fine in my books. I'll just leave it how it is. So we got Pionk playing with Hannafin and then Schmidt, Myers, Shillington with a Nicholas. In net, we got Thatcher. So he should be able to carry us to the playoffs just by himself. Oh yeah. Plus five on the power play. That's got your eye on it. Hopefully... He grows in overall substantially throughout the year. I suppose it is prediction time. I think we will make the playoffs, which isn't really saying much because six out of seven teams make it. I'm really struggling with this one. I don't know. I just don't know what to say. I feel like we're going to finish top three, but I could be totally wrong there. Okay, you know what? I said it to 70 games, right? So yeah, we're going to finish top three. I'll say we get... 38 wins, which I mean, in a 70 game season should be pretty solid. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. 40 wins. We're going to get 40 wins. ADB will get the most points with 75. He will be point a game plus five. And Thatcher Demko gets a 920. This calendar looks so weird seeing only Canadian teams, but let's get the simulation started. Oh boy. Oh, well, never mind. I take it back. We really... I swear I turned injuries off. Watch it be like a season ending injury as well. I just went and turned them off now, but... I don't know when he's going to be back. I didn't read it. I was too busy being upset. Okay, lovely. He's back. Let's go to edit lines manually. I didn't really change much of anything. So I'm just going to do a best lines again. Where is it? Head coach preferred lines. Yup. And then Slaff. Oh, wait, no. You put in camp. And I am going to scratch him. Nicholas, welcome back to the roster. Yeah, I think that's the only move I really made. So we're good. We are set and ready to simulate yet again. We are middle of the pack right now, currently third, doing not too shabby. At the trade deadline, we have a record of 30, 25, and 6. Well, I guess it also depends on the outcome of this Winnipeg Jets game, but 40 wins, likely not gonna happen. Let's find out. Ooh, 6-1 L to the Jets. Rough go. I will keep our current trading block and go in to see who is available for this year's trade deadline. We got Bo Horvat, 85 overall. It's pretty solid. Maybe worth going after? They really want a defenseman, which I don't know how I feel about that. Suzuki's up at 87, Robertson 79. Same with Shane Pinto, he's also at 79. Let's go. What about Slavkovsky? What is he doing? He is still 79. Phenomenal. Okay, well, Horvat got traded. That's unfortunate. You snooze, you lose, I suppose. But now, we have Kadri on the block. Seven years, seven million. Let's see if we could... Try to obtain this lad. They pretty much just want prospects or Tyler Myers, which is very odd. Obviously, the trade values are kind of outrageous for the draft picks because there is just seven teams. I think I'm going to try this out 
Why not? Might as well. Propose trade. Trade rejected. Okay, I'll move that up to a second then, I suppose. There you go. That bumps the value up a little bit. Probably still not there though. Trade rejected still. Okay. What if I add another prospect, you know? Will that tickle your fancy? We'll add in Johnston. Top six forward. Pretty good, not gonna lie. Now the value is not really looking great for us, but I don't care. I'm still gonna propose it. Really? A second, a seventh, and Sourdiff for Kadri. Proposed trade. Really? This is my last crack at it. I've added a fourth. If they say no to this, I'm out of here. Okay, they finally accept it. Some always is. Whenever I say this is the last one, it's like they hear me and they're like, okay, fine. Slaff on line one actually gets a plus five. So he's gonna be playing with Kadri and ADB. And then we got Toffoli, Suzuki, Kane. That is a nasty second line. Robertson at 79 will now be here. And yeah, I guess they took out... Our boy, Milan Lucic, which I don't know how I feel about that. I also took Kampf out and put Shane Pinto back in, who's listed as a fourth line forward. All right, I think these are the lines we're going to rock. Fogel will now be on the fourth line. Unfortunately, Lucic has been deleted from the lineup in exchange for Kadri, but, you know, Kadri still pretty gritty. Defensively, we did not move whatsoever. We still got Pionk and Hannafin, Schmidt, Myers, and then Nicholas playing with Oliver. How's Thatcher doing? 905. That's okay. Jake Allen, 923. Holy smokes. Let's proceed with the sim here. And we started off pretty hot, but once again, cooled off very quickly. Two games in two weeks. And we finished with 34 wins, which is good enough for fifth. And we are a part of that wild card play in, I believe. Yes, the wild card round. We have the Winnipeg Jets here as our first opponent. I will sim the first three games. Let's see how it goes. Oh, yeah. That's a great start. Will the Jets push a best of three? They do not. All right, we are in the driver's seat. Let's go ahead and see if we can take it home, and we do. So now we have the Calgary Flames next, which will be the semifinal. First three games, here we go. Simulate to this date. That's not a great start. 5-4-L, ooh, ooh. Just don't get swept? Nope, we got swept. Apparently Toronto just has the best team of all time, because I... I think they won the President's Trophy and they just won the Stanley Cup as well. Yep, they did win the President's Trophy 99 points. They won it convincingly. They had 10 more wins than Montreal, who was in second. 48, 21, and 3. What the heck? What is your team made of? Matthews, Miller, Giroux, Soup, Tavares, Milano, Doc, Rask, Broussard. Okay, Hughes, Barry, Clefbaum, Giordano, Campbell, and Nett. I don't know. It's good. It's a good team. Don't get me wrong, but... I don't understand how they dominated that much. Oh, that's right. I did 72 games. Anyway, ADB only put up 60 points. We got 64 from Kadri, who only played 70 games. So we traded for him, and he ended up leading our team. Toffoli had 53, and Suzuki 52. Slaff ended up at an 80 overall. He had 37 points this year. Thatcher didn't do so hot. 21, 23, and 7, four shutouts, and a 903. And then Allen went 13, 8, no, with a shutout, a 922, 34. That is unexpected to say the least. Jack Campbell, he led the league with a total of 35 wins. 9.12 save percentage. We got a 9.17 from Hellebuck here and a 9.22 from Daniel. Quinn Hughes led defenseman. He was point a game. 72 points in 72 games. Riley had 59 and then it drops right off to Bouchard who had 33. Hannafin and Shabbat and Giordano with 32. Matthews had 36 goals which looks like it is a Rocket Richard. Ehlers came pretty close actually with 34 and then McDusty had 32. But he also led the league 85 points. Shifley had 81 and then McDusty with 79. We already know the team awards, and we know some of the individual trophies as well. Matthews, yep, of course. Quinn Hughes gets the Norris and the Lady Bing. Slaff gets the Calder. Fire me up. At least we got something. Kirby Doc with the Con Smythe. Hellebuck gets the Vesna. Samsonov with the Jennings. Hall gets the Masterton. Fowler with the Jack Adams. Lindholm gets the Selkie. Matthews with the Lindsay and the Rocker Richard. Uh huh, of course. McDavid dominated in the playoffs, though. He had 20 points in 12 games. Brady Kachuk had 14 in 12. Kirby Doc had 10 points in 11 games and took home the Con Smythe, which is very intriguing. I wonder what else he did. He must have did something right. And Victor Rask, 9 points in 11 playoff games. Yeah, Jack Campbell did phenomenal. He had a record of 8, 2, and 1. Two shutouts, a 9.34, a 9.64 from Holpe, who had two Ws. So yeah, here's the playoff tree, including the wild card round. We got absolutely deleted by the Calgary Flames, who then got rinsed by the Toronto Maple Leafs. And yeah, Toronto actually, you know, Montreal gave them a run for their money. Pushed them all the way to 7. But then 
Once Toronto moved on, it was light work. They swept Calgary in the finals. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Hopefully you're enjoying the NHL 23 content and the game. Hopefully you're just having a good time on it if you have managed to pick it up. And on that note, guys, I will be seeing you soon.